Welcome to Aussie Homesteading. I'm Troy. And I'm Emily. And today we're going to make Viking's blood. So what we've got is we've got frozen cherries bought at the supermarket today. Sweet cherries. Sweet cherries. And they were from Woolworths. Um, they were the Woolworths brand and I think they were $4 for 500 grams. So we've got two bags. So we've got a kilo. And we've got two almost full tub, kilo tubs of honey. So, and that's what we're going to uh, make our Viking's, Viking's blood, blood from. Which is cherry mead. Cherry mead. Um, so it's really honey mead with cherries, hence the colour Viking's blood. That's right. So, to start off with, we need to mash up, blend up our cherries. Okay, first we're going to sterilise our hands. And this is sterilising solution. Um, making sure we've got it all through our cells before we touch the sterilised bits and bobs. So, oh, we didn't plug this little bugger in. Just there. Oh, look at that. Aren't you efficient? <laughs> Joking. <laughs> I'll bring that into you. Thank you. This is going to be noisy, so. <coughs> oh! Now, this is how we make our Vikings blood that we enjoy. It's all, all different people have recipes for it. We like to put um, half our mix will stay cherry mead itself, and then the other half will put chocolate in. Yes. And then in that, we'll have one or two bottles will have some cinnamon in them. Another bottle will have some vanilla in it. Whoops. Another one might have nutmeg in it. So they've all just got a slightly different flavour as the mood strikes you. That's right. I'm making a bit of a mess here, but... That's alright. Um, some people mash their cherries with like a potato masher, but we like to mash it... Uh, not. We have done that in the past, but we actually decided to bar mix it because you're getting, um, you're just really crushing up those skins a little bit more and it just seems to make stronger cherry flavour, doesn't stronger it? Stronger cherry, a lot stronger colour. So we suggest if you're wanting, and it's cherry mead, it's not honey mead with cherry, it's cherry mead. So you want the most cherry flavour you can get out of it and the most success we've had for getting a really strong cherry flavour is by bar mixing it. So yeah. I'm just going to put that aside because we're done with that now. Okay. So now we'll pour this. So what we've got here mm. is pre-warmed 18 litres of water. So it's about 28 degrees centigrade at the moment. And should keep it about that with adding the honey and, and everything. And I've got excess Wait, water. You want this bachelor? Yes, please. Nice Paw Patrol one. <laughs> A must do. And I'm splashing it everywhere. If you can't see. And every last drop of cherry juice out of that container. Oh yeah. Now that is nice. And now add the honey. Oh, should we pitch the yeast first? Very good idea. <coughs> a little bit of water. Hydrate the yeast. Hydrate I mean. the yeast. Not pitching it yet. I'll pitch that later, but that's enough water yet. Yep. And we got drops of cherry on it, but that's okay. Share and share alike. And what one are you using? Now, what we're using here is a Mangrove Jacks Mild uh, Mead Yeast. Uh, M5 
No. O5. No, M05. M05. You don't have your glasses on. M05. It's a bit of an angle. You're lucky, I've got 20 20 vision. Now, this yeast is good up to 18% um, and has a fermentation range between 15 and 30 degrees. So, I tend to keep it around about 25 to 28 degrees. Um, and I find that works best. Mm. So, now we'll add the honey. And yeah, we'll just clean this for you. Thank you. I have a bucket of sterilized water over here, which is what we're, why I'm poking down. That's what we do. We keep sterilizing things as we go. And this honey has been warmed just slightly, just to make it runny. And that's raw honey, fresh out of the hive. Um, we have beehives, so we are um, in constant supply of honey. Um, hence why we started getting into honey mead, because we were um, always with a lot of honey. Yep, got to use it up. And speaking of that, we are drinking tonight Mm. A blue gum honey mead, which we made what a month ago. Yeah, a month ago. And it's, but it's only been bottled for about a week. Um, and this is a sweet, yeah, sweet blue gum. And oh my god, this is so delicious. This is actually, I think, the best one honey mead I've ever tasted. As a honey mead on its own, this mm. is incredibly sweet. Um, and I think I, I have a bit of a um, preference to the sweet wines. Yes. Oh, oh that a was a bit of a, a flopper. Yes, yeah, a little bit caramelised. I might just use this because there's some stuff. I've got some on the side of the container and that just frustrates me. Oh, and the other one we're drinking tonight is um, same honey mead, same mix, but in this bottle, um, into some cheesecloth, we put, I think it was about four raspberries. Yeah. Um, and they were just frozen raspberries. We just took um, four raspberries out of the frozen raspberry packet, put it in a piece of cheesecloth, and whoops, excuse me, whacked it into the top of the bottle. I don't know if you can see that that well. And um, the colour has purely come from, and that's, and really the raspberries have only been in there a week. Yeah. So only and been yeah, in a week. there's yeah. definitely a hint of raspberry. Mm. Whereas when you're when you're actually doing the fermentation with the fruit in it already, this is going to be an extreme flavour. That one's just like this slight little aftertaste of raspberry. It's very faint, but it's there. It is. And it's just got that attractive colour as well. And it also takes away from some of the sweetness because it's actually the same batch of honey yeah, mead. It, it has. It has actually taken some of the sweetness away and it's ended up being more dry compared to the mm. straight honey mead. Mm. And I'm just doing this because I don't want to waste any of this yeast. Every little module of yeast is um, getting Counts. that alcohol up. Yep. So, now I just need to good. give this a good mix now. There we go. You can have that back. Just leave that there. Now give this a really good mix. Get all that honey dissolved. Get all the uh, cherries mixed in there. And aerate it a bit too. Mm. Need to aerate first couple of days, get some air in there, the yeast really uh, thrives with that. And this is going to be a beautiful coloured cherry mead, mm. Viking's blood. You can already see it. Yeah. Um, and we always start our meads out in a fermenting bucket opposed to starting in a demijohn. Yeah. But so we a lot easier. Mm. And then, because you can get in there, you can mix it. Um, Demijohns are 
quite interesting to try and mix. We learnt that pretty early on, didn't we? <laughs> we did. We did indeed. So we always start out in, well really these are marketed as beer brew buckets, aren't they? Fermentation buckets. Fermentation buckets. And then, um, and then when we've strained off our cherries, we'll put it into a demijohn and finish off. Yeah. And now, so we're up to 20 litres. We'll take it to 23 litres. Some more water. Let me know when to stop, please. I will, I will, I will. Okay, guys, that'll do. Okay. And now... Mmm, honey on my fingers. I know, I've got honey on my fingers too. Mm -hmm. Now to pitch the yeast. It's nicely hydrated. It's like a milky... Almost like a pale uh, iced coffee. Mm. Now why you... Um, you always hydrate it first for the purpose of... And so you don't shock the yeast. By chucking it in there. By just chucking it straight in here. You want to get it, bring it up to life. Bring it up to room temperature. Uh, before you put it in. Let's and chuck a little bit more water in there. Yeah, it's a tiny little bit. Where are we? that yeast. Now, give it another good mix. And really try and aerate it. Oh, making a bit of a mess. Now we've pitched the yeast, it's time to get a hydrometer reading as our base start. All this equipment has been sterilised out of the bucket on the side. Yep, not enough. Now we are only at. One oh twenty four. So we want to add some mm. sugar into there. So the reading you want to bring it up to is I want to bring it up to I know, about one oh seventy. And at one oh seventy oh yeah, one oh seventy, one oh eighty. So I'll tip this back in. Some people throw that out, but not us. Waste not, what not. So there's no reason to, it's all sterile. You know, that's a glass of wine later.
NASA specific gravity reading is 1.09 which will give us an alcohol percent expected of 12% put that back in. Assuming we don't distill it. That's an option as well. Mm. We haven't done that yet. No, we did talk about that today when we decided to make this one today. We've never distilled a Viking blood, so would be a a honey spirit, well it would be a cherry honey spirit. That it would. It'd be interesting. Chop, no, cherry chalk honey spirit. Cherry honey chalk. Moonshine. No. Yeah, because we're going to put them in when we. Uh, we'll do, when, when we're we put putting them in the. Um, Demi Johns. Demi Johns. We'll put some um, chocolate in. Airlock, please. Airlock. And that's got sterilised water in it. You can use alcohol or sterilised water. We generally use sterilised water because why waste alcohol? That's right. And now put that into a, a cooled up place. Mm. I tend to put a heating band on them because we get a bit cold here at night this time of year. And about 10 days we'll decant it into the demijohn. Yeah, we'll be um, sieving out the cherries because they'll be spent by then. Yep. And we'll put another video then. Thanks for watching. Another homesteading... No. Nope. Another Aussie. Aussie homesteading video where we... Distill you. Distill like a hillbilly bogan. Hunt like a caveman. Brew like a viking. And... Preserve like a 19th century housewife. So, please subscribe, hit that bell, and like our videos. See you next time.